Halloween, tis the season of ghosts, ghouls, and spiders. And oh, what a tangled web we'd weave if we tried to do this, all with a pen tool in Illustrator. There's a much easier way to do it, which is to divide the design into segments and repeat them. To start out, I've created a 7-inch square artboard, and I've dragged down guidelines 1 inch from each edge and to the centers. In the center of the 7-inch square, I've drawn a second square, 5 inches by 5 inches. So there's 1 inch border, 7 inch around. And the last thing I did to set up the foundation to create this spider web was to draw a 4 inch circle centered on the background in the artboard and divide that circle into a 60 degree piece with what was the center point sitting on the center of the artboard. Both the background and the segment have their own layer. I've locked the background layer and I've created a new layer that I've called web. That's where I'm going to do my artwork, creating the spider web. You can see that a segment is now perfectly centered and it's standing straight, it's symmetrical. That's just going to make it easier to create my final design because it is symmetrical. I don't want there to be a fill in this piece. Let me quickly switch back to my final. So you can see what I have going on here is a series of lines like the silk of a spider web that I can see through. So back here to my work in progress, the first thing I want to do is go to my swatches panel and I'm going to change my fill to none and I'm going to change my stroke to one point. You can change it to whatever weight you'd want and then I'll go back and activate the stroke box. Go to swatches, choose the white swatch. I now have a white outline around this piece. I'm going to now go to my tool panel and find my scissor tool. And it looks like it's hidden under my erasers tool here. It's the shortcut C, like Charlie, or cut. That will access your scissors tool. So if I select this arc, this pie piece, I'm just going to cut on these two anchor points, the ones where the arc intersects with the straight lines. And I am going to now switch to my selection tool and delete this V shape that's underneath them. All right. Select the arc. So now I just have one single arc. If I go back to my finished spider web, that arc is this line right here. So the next thing we need to do is finish weaving our web. Back to the transform panel again. I'm going to change my point of reference to the center, the very center point. And I'm going to go to the panel menu and I'm going to flip it vertically. And so now I've got the first strand of my spider web. I'm simply going to hold down my Option key or my Alt key on the PC and my Shift key to constrain the coordinates. And I'm going to Option, Shift, Click, and drag a new strand. Now that I've done that, if I go to my Object menu, and transform and transform again, which is Command D on the Mac, Control D on the PC. It's going to remember that distance and it's going to repeat that arc as many times as I need it to. And I'm just going to stop once it reaches the center here. Okay, again, save my work. Good time to save. This is where we're going to need that segment again that we have on the hidden layer. So I'll go to my layers panel and I will turn on that hidden layer select the segment and again I want to make a copy of it so I'll do it a different way this time if I hold down my option key or my alt key click the proxy drag it to the web layer I've now made a copy again okay I'll hide the segment layer change the fill to none so this time I'm going to go up here to my control panel and I'm going to use the shortcut here to just simply bring up my swatches and I'm going to change the swatch to none. It may help to temporarily go to view and view this in outline because you can now start to see what's happening up here. Right? And it looks like I have an extra line because what's going to happen, well we'll leave it there so you can see what happens. 
What I want to do now is go back to my layers panel and make sure that everything but this web layer is locked. Because I like to drag a marquee to make selections like this, or multiple items, and what I want to do is simply click, hold, and drag and select those multiple items. If I have items on other layers, what's going to happen is I'm going to accidentally select them unless I lock them. I can lock the whole layer, I can lock them individually. This segment layer is hidden, I can lock that just to be safe anyway. So the only thing I'm working on is the web layer and it's targeted. And I'm going to expand that layer because this is important. I want to make sure that that shape, or segment as we're calling it, is on top because we're going to create a clipping mask for these strands. Okay, so let me drag out my marquee. I've selected both the segment and the strands. And with everything selected, if I go to my object menu and drag down to clipping mask and over to make, the shortcut is Command-7 on the Mac, Control-7 on the PC, and I go back to my view menu and preview, I now have my very first segment of this six-paned spider web. And you can see why we're going to need to delete this very top strand because it doesn't really make sense there. We're going to want that to meet. So let me go to my direct selection tool, my white arrow, and click on just that arc and delete it. So now that I have one done, okay, here's my whole segment. Here's where it gets really fast. I'm going to select that. So that's the clipping mask that holds those other lines that are making the strands. Once I select it, I go to edit, copy, go back to edit, paste in place. It's the exact same coordinates. There are two right on top of the other. And if you look in my layers panel, you can even see that. I've got clip group, clip group. Back to my transform panel. Here's where the point of reference comes in again. I'll change that to the bottom center. And I'm going to rotate this 180 degrees. And now I have two segments. Hold down my shift key, select them both, Command C for copy, Command Shift V, or Control Shift V to paste them in place. I now have my second set of segments. So in other words, segments three and four. And I will go back to my transform panel, change the point of reference to the center point, and I want to angle this selection 60 degrees, so six zero in the rotate field. I now have three quarters of my spider web finished. I've already got those two segments in my pasteboard, so I just have to paste in place again. Make sure I'm in my selection tool, Command Shift V or Control Shift V. Angle it instead of 60 degrees, this time I will angle it minus 60 degrees in the transform panel and I now have my spider web. So I basically took one segment, created it, and repeated it. This works for any radial design. If I go back to my finished artwork, one of the last things that I did to finish this off a little bit was add lines between each segment. So I'm going to just hide some stuff so we can see the lines themselves. I'm going to expand my layer, turn that background on again so we can see the white a little bit easier. If I hide each clipping group, you'll see that what I'm left with is actually three lines that cross each other. So how did I do this? Let me go back to our work in progress. And if you remember, I started with what was a four inch circle. So I'm going to select my line tool from my tool panel. I'll click on the center point here. And I want to make sure that my length is four inches. And I'm going to change my angle to 180 degrees because I want it to be a horizontal line. So four inches, 180 degrees. And I'll click OK. So now I have to make some adjustments. I have to move it so it is centered. So I'm going to go to my window menu and I'm going to drag down to align. And with my align panel, I'm going to go to the panel menu, show options, so I can see everything the panel does. And here where it says align to, I'm going to make sure that it's set to align to artboard. And once I've done that, I can simply use the Align Objects Horizontal Center option, and it's going to move that line 
dead center on the page. Next thing I'll do is I'll go up here to my control panel and I'll use the shortcut to change my stroke of that line to white. And the last thing I'm going to do is go to my object menu and I'm going to go to transform and use the transform each command. So what do I know about this? Well, I know that each of these segments was created with a 60 degree arc. So with my reference point set to the center, and I'll check preview so I can see what's going to happen. I can go to my angle and rotate this around the center point 60 degrees. And the great thing about the transform each command is instead of clicking OK, I can click copy. And what that's going to do is it's going to create a copy of what I did with the transformation. And if I go to Object, Transform, Transform again, it's going to repeat everything. It will not only do the transformation, but it will also copy it. So let me undo that because it's really kind of cool. So Transform Each, the keyboard shortcut for that is Command, Option, Shift, D, or Control, Alt, Shift, D on the PC. And you can see that because I just did it, Illustrator actually remembers all of the information that I put here. So all I need to do is copy. And once I've done it once, I can use the transform again command, command D on the Mac or control D on the PC, D for duplicate. If I go back to my finished artwork, and of course it looks a little bit different, but that's fine. In my layers panel, if I open it, I added some type. On that type, I went to Effects and I dragged down to Stylized over to Drop Shadow and put a Drop Shadow on it. And because it's already there, it's just telling me uh, I'm doing it twice, so I'll just click Cancel. So I'm going to hide all but the background layer. So that's where we started. This was the web. The web also has a Drop Shadow on it. Again, same place, Effect, Stylized, Drop Shadow. On top of that, I put some type. And on top of that, I drew this spider. And those are really just shapes. And if I hide all but the spider, actually I'll leave the background so you can see it, I just took my pen tool and I drew a little vector. So the spider is actually weaving her tangled web. So a really easy way to have some fun and work with selections, work with the pathfinder, work with clipping masks, and work with transformations. So as you can see, our spider really isn't a scary one. Hope you've had some fun with the tutorial, and may your trick-or-treat bag be full.